talk about some basics here. So typically in a form study, you just shouldn't be showing the light source. We get where the light source is coming from. You can, you can have a, an indicator, but just don't show it on the screen. When a, when a light source, when you take a photograph of a light source, it drowns everything. So don't be in the habit of including the light source in the painting. Unless it's some kind of really weak light or something, it's really going to in inhibit the um, contrast of the focal point. <clears throat> okay, sorry today. I have really lost my voice. I have no voice for you guys today. I used it on all my sessions from today, all the like, hours of lectures. Um, so my voice is just gone. Um, so what we have here is, so yeah, leave the light sources out of your videos. I mean, leave <laughs> the light sources out of your... <laughs> oh man, I'm so tired. Leave the light sources out of your paintings. Okay. So, what you've done here is, um, all right, so this edge right here, see everybody see this little corner, this little tip? This tip should have been where this edge ended off. So that's what you're looking for when you do your form studies. Tips of, d indicated by the contour and how you're supposed to represent that in the surface area. Please make sure you guys are focusing on the lesson. Do not discuss um, stuff like Rick and Morty <laughs> or anything similar to that um, while I'm teaching, okay? <clears throat> All right, so we have another example here of where you did have an edge, but you had a curve coinciding with it. So what happened there? So we need to correct that and blend this out so that that edge doesn't behave like it is a corner because the contour does not indicate a corner. So, edges are determined by the contour as much as the interior of the object. Alright, so this is the exterior of the object. <clears throat> when you do your first lasso, you're making all the decisions. When you did your first lasso, which you sh should be done with a polygonal lasso tool, but I think your issue here is that you did it with freehand lasso tool. Form studies should be done with a polygonal lasso tool. That's because it has actual sharp edges. So this one, instead of, you just keep pressing to get the other, um, uh, thingies, um, and then <laughs> this one is the freehand lasso tool, and this is polygonal. Okay, so all of these aren't really edges. None of them are really that sharp, but I'm just going to go ahead and let them meet an edge. Really, sh they should be something like this because they meet a soft edge, um, not a sharp edge, which is what you're supposed to be doing. Then we're going to talk about what you did here. So you had an edge over here you had an edge over here and you kind of let them meet this but then this th this one happened and kind of just crushed everything so right along here this surface which you've given a gray for you suddenly stopped it why unless you have a value that stops it like you actually stop painting the wall after a certain point then you shouldn't just have rogue colors hanging around so we gave this one solid value and then we're left with this, which is another weird painting. So this is part of the light half. So this is a, this is definitely, you know, there are definite issues here. So let's talk about them all as fast as possible because I do want to get into every single one of these today. So we have light, and then we have a sudden drop, and then we have more light. <clears throat> Okay, because this sudden drop means a sudden change in the value. And if you don't know how to think about lighting, I have a video called um, How to Lighting. <laughs> you just, just Google, I mean, just search that in my video history. And that's pretty much what, what we have. And then we have this curving happening between this surface and this surface. This surface curves into that and disappears. This is the only way to really make sense of what you've painted here. This is a front side that's moving into and in front of like a neck. This would be the neck. And that would be the cast shadow. It's a little bit lighter. And then a little bit more light here. And I'm using a blocking brush because this is all teaching you how to block in values when you're painting a face. You're finding the geometries first. But this is so far gone outside of the rules that you've pretty much set yourself up for failure because you went a little bit too complicated. So before you try these and then, you know, forever think of form studies as the dumbest exercise, try 
doing it as, you know, a really basic shape first. Try some basic shapes. See how you wrap your head around what's required of you when an edge happens. What's required of you when a, when a spherical condition happens. But this is all the sense I could make out of this shape. And what's great about form studies is that they prepare you for when you do have weird rock shapes like this. They prepare you for the geometry in a face. They prepare you for everything. So good job on starting your form study. I commend you for that. But I want you to focus on simplicity first and then trying to complicate it. Okie dokie. So who did this? Is the person who did this in the audience today? <clears throat> it is an interesting shape, definitely. Um, but it is very, very complicated. So I'm going to have to take some creative liberty. So I'm going to have to pretend that this ends off in front of the shape beneath it. This cast shadow belongs to this shape right here. And this corner, so lighten, this corner just travels all the way up inside. Do you see that? So now we have like this really weird shape but we've still made sense of it. So this is a separate part right here. And this is what you're supposed to be doing, sculpting. If you want to perform studies, you are allowed to sketch out the form study first. Try to figure out how to make sense of it. Which surface areas go where? You don't have to freelance it which is, I mean, uh, freestyle it, and freestyling it is really when you just do the lasso and go straight into the painting. So you can sketch it out, then do the lasso, and then start painting and making sense of it all. Okay? So I'm just going to use lighten here to correct some of this, and then this face right here is reflecting off some light on the inside. It slowly becomes and then we've got this piece right here, reflecting upward. This, you've gone too dark and you've gone too light here. You set yourself up for failure here as well because you went too dark. And basically what you're telling yourself is, hey, you're allowed to use black as abundantly as you are allowed to use the grays. That's not true. Your, the black marker for your palette should be a tiny little dot just to keep you, just keep it in mind that you're not supposed to be doing that. Use a little black and a little white. It's all grays. At the end of the day, the best grays sit in, the best colors sit in grays. And when you're trying to prepare yourself to get better at painting faces or objects or clothing, you want to get better at painting with grays instead of painting with all these super contrast superhero colors because not everything comes in these forms. Not everything comes in pure white or pure black. All right, then we have some cast shadows. I was with Nika today and for a lesson and all I could do is just say cast shirters. <laughs> so now every time I say cast shadows, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I feel like I should just say cur shirters. Because Zena is to back in her cur shirters. Alright. So and then select that. Oh my gosh, select inverse. No, this is all wrongish. <clears throat> That's fine. Hide, and then I'm just throwing a slight cast shadow there. <clears throat> so sorry about my coughing. And then we can use white eventually on these surface areas here, wherever the light is reaching. And we're not really thinking about the light source anymore. Um, uh, we're just pretty much complementing whatever the light source did. So of course we will always think about the light source, but we already considered all of that here. Now it's just polishing and bringing in contrast only where stuff is the closest. So this stuff doesn't have to do with the light source so much. It has to do with the shape of the object, which is the highest point, which is the most exposed point on the object. That's the part that gets all the white like that. Okay, so we considered the light for the direction of the core shadows, the direction of the cast shadows. <laughs> and now what I'm doing 
is I want to blend some of these edges because everything is blocked in. But where do I blend? I blend anywhere where a gradient has been indicated for me. So if on the outline, motherfucker, if on the outline I find this kind of shape and I have an edge that's been blocked in, I blend all this. If on the outline I find this and I blocked in this, I don't touch that because the edge is telling me this edge continues. This vertice, this point, this arrowhead tells me that I can keep this edge because that's really how sharp it is. It's the edge of a table. But if I put the edge of a table type shadow without blending on the side that says, hey, this is the side of a couch and I didn't blend it, it's not going to feel like a couch. Okay. I've answered this a hundred times and it's pretty self-explanatory. The kind of form studies that are good for students, beginners, are basic cubes, basic spheres, basic shapes, basic pyramids set up in like this landscape setting with the light source on them. So you can have some cylinders, you can have some spheres floating, some minor blobs, you can have some cubes, weird cube shapes. You can just start with this. Then you can customize them and make them all super psychedelic and make some really extended blobs and try to figure out from there and just rack your brain. All of these, again, remove the label and replace it with just forms. Your visual library is filled with clues as to how to render something based on how it, how it comes. So nothing will ever be able to sneak up on you. All right, so select inverse, and then I'll show you the before and after, which will be a substantial difference. But this is the point of form studies, and it carries you from sort of a really not representational shape of a cube that is really symbol-based and, and um, line-dependent. And you can tell when a student falls off, if they're missing the line, you can tell that it was because they're, uh, they weren't allowed to use lines. And so they fall apart because edge work to them means nothing. Uh, the right now, like in their language system, just like how I don't know how to say there is a stone in my shoe in Russian because I've never studied it, there's no place in my brain for that kind of vocabulary. I don't know how to say that. Exactly the same thing. Right now, you guys haven't learned the language of edge work. And so you don't know what to do when, it, when it's expected of you. And so you fall off and you end up leaning on uh, stuff that's worked in the past. It's let you believe, I am an artist. You know, I am artist. And that's line stuff. Sketchy stuff. But if, you know, you want to get better, you want to be able to illustrate that crazy stuff you see on Magic the Gathering, you're going to have to be able to tackle this without, without a sweat. And that is possible if you do your form studies. I bet some of you are like, I swear, I swear, I say form study one more time. <laughs> I'm trying to cast the shadow here. Curse to shirter. Okay, and then just like that. That's a terrible curse shirter. Okay, it starts. And then it kind of just, oops. Oops. Oh, come on. Photoshop is like pissing itself. Okay, that's probably not where that cash shadow belongs. The cash shadow probably happens right over here. Nope, that's not where it happens either. Um, this whole thing is wrong. This cash shadow here is wrong. It probably could do a little something like that. Something like, something like that, maybe, if I'm going to be extending it, like all the way over here as a cast shadow. But I'm going to go ahead and let those cast shadows disappear. I'll let you decide. I'm going to just make them very soft. Because oh, I don't have time to figure this one out. This one's very complicated. Um, so... This is what you were missing before. Combining shapes together to complete one shape, breaking things down shape by shape, piece by piece, and then combining them all depending on the outline, what the outline is indicating for you. Okay, so before, after. So really it looked like a quilt. You were just piecing stuff beside stuff like it was ironed out. You didn't think about maybe making something jut out. And you were having this issue um, 
among many other issues because maybe you need to sketch things out, simplify your form studies for a little bit so you can see the basic shape when it is combined with other basic shapes into one big mecha basic shape or super shape, sorry. Okay, so this photo reference piece, I'm doing a little bit of everything today. I will take questions at the end. So if you do have questions, save them in a copy paste area and um, uh, ask them again at the end of the class. So the problem with this piece, which is uh, the problem with a lot of pieces in photo referencing, is that you're not recognizing the planes. There are very distinct planes over here that I'm not seeing in your work. All right, the big one is the forehead. The forehead is so neglected, but it just frames the face. Okay, and then we've got the blue areas, or the, sorry, the yellow areas, which are the shadow. I'm going to make them blue. <clears throat> so all of this right here is shadow. Anything that has not been outlined by red is shadow. Even the eyeballs. Okay, so what you have is, you look at this, you got this big blob of something in a shadow area. You've got another big blob of something else. Then you've given me the shadow that makes no sense. Then we have this shadow that is similar to the shadow of the beard of the face, which is the, the halfway core shadow of the sphere on the side of the nose, which is technically an area that looks up. This is a shadow, but it's nowhere near this kind of shadow. Imagine this being as a darker blue. This is just a, this is value sharing. So what some of you guys do is uh, paint as if you are putting one value beside the other and then following some kind of visual library that you have according to how to paint a nose and then placing that beside how to paint, um, I'm not looking at the chat, how to paint a, um, a lip and then you're putting that beside some other stuff you picked up from another reference and you're just making like a Frankenstein of different references you once used instead of actually just looking at this reference and it'll answer all your questions for you. Every question you have, it's right there in front of you. So let's start off by correcting some of this anatomy. Also, I don't think you measured the face. I don't think you measured the eyes. So let's start, let's start there. Okay, she's got downward facing eyes just like that. The eyeballs that you used are way too bloodshot. She looks older in yours and you probably heard that. And if you're the kind of artist, you probably would have said, oh yeah, I intended that. That was actually my intention to make her look older. I was trying to experiment uh, with the human condition, you know, talking about how beauty is only uh, skin deep and how as we age, we're really not. So I drew and made a side by side of her when she was young and where she is now in the same expression. And I feel like I really, you know, represented the human condition very well. You, you, I would get, I would probably have like $5 if I got a quarter for every time I heard that excuse, you know, they actually go full on explaining why they decided to go in that direction. Honestly, I'm not going to believe it. I'm not saying this artist did it, but beware. So I corrected the liquify. The eye was drooping. It was large. It was like it was melting off. I put that together. She has more of a dolly face. Um, the, the eyes you drew are a little bit um, like the face you drew. It doesn't really move into a, a tiny little chin. So just don't be confused by the fact that you see a square jaw. She's actually got a tiny little chin. And you kind of enlarged it in this direction. Oh, I've seen so many artists like that. I used to be like that, but not so much like philo philosophical. I would just be like, yeah, man, I, I just wanted that. And I was like 16 and 15. And that's why I don't say anything when I get hate mail from like 15 and 16 year olds. Because I was like, yeah, I was once your age. I was just at mass. You know, just discovering that my anger, you know, just, just, just realizing my teenage rage, you know, getting to, getting to know it. They're just experimenting with rage, among other things. Right, and then the lips are a little bit smaller. The chin is more tucked in and shorter. And we've got a three-quarter view nose that for some reason I made it front view. I don't know why I did that. Okay, this eye over here needs to get shifted. Just so it looks a little more like her. And the point of photo referencing, even though you're not doing a friggin' photorealism, I don't even consider that art because it's just human just being a printer um 
So, you know, if you really are going to go up against a printer, like an HP printer, you, you, the printer's going to win. So you might as well just print it. <clears throat> Unless your detail is like some sort of freakish attention to detail. And it's, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. But it, that's not the point. When I say copy the face. When I say copy the face, so your brain memorizes this one face if you need to call on it later. So now about those things that I blocked in earlier. We need to start limiting some areas here. So I'm following that exact pattern that I had. I'm darkening where I had blues. And that map I drew is a universal map. It's not some sort of magic trick that only I know. It's not some sort of magic trick and that every face has a different blue and red map on it. All faces have the same contours and depressions, generally speaking, because we all have a skeleton underneath. We're all humans, so our genetic code is a human species. So all our skeletons look pretty much the same. And if, for those who have scientific blue balls in the audience who like to point out that there are differences between skeletons, um, we know. All right. So I'm slowly raising the forehead up, and I'm trying to see where the temple starts. She has a very round face, so I'm setting up a temple. These are all things that are easy to see when you look at a bare skeleton. I'm going to blend out the eyebrows before she starts looking any more like Ursula, because this girl's got thick brows. And just look, another fat patch of nothing just sitting there. That's all part of the depression of the eye socket. It's a big fat hole in the skeleton and it's not exposed to any light. It doesn't have as much light as a forehead. This value is not this value. This value is not this value. This is darker. So I'm going to darken it. All right. This I'm going to limit it right along here. I'm going to limit the geometry of the nose. That's geometric anatomy, meaning the nose has a, a geometric shape underneath it that is a very universal shape that you can find and make it easier for you to understand a nose. For some people it's a pyramid for a nose, for some people it's a square or a rectangle, like rectangular cube. Okay, so I'm making borders that, that are not sharing, that are not shared. This whole lower half of the face, the lower half of the face is darker than the upper half of the face if the light source is top down. Now I smudge, and I'm going to smudge the crap out of the eyebrows, out of the forehead. I'm going to over smudge areas that are spherical beneath all of that, above all of that geometric anatomy. So the forehead, though it may be uh, cubed on the sides, I'm going to over smudge it just a little. See, we still have those shadows on the sides of the temple, but we've curved them off extra because it's such a dome-like shape, especially her face. The cheekbones, also a lot of blending, but around the nose, I'm going to shrink my smudge brush. And this smudge brush, if you guys haven't been using it, is just my smudge brush combined with smudge tool. All right, I'm blending around here. See, I smudged very gently. I'm blending around here. And look, you're missing the most beautiful part of painting lips, which is the radial shading on that pit on either side of the lips, this beautiful radial shade that really is the shape of her lips. She's got like these really, really delicate edges to her lips right there and there. And then you've got these small areas that catch the light underneath it. And this is all possible only because of the blocking in. I was going to make a joke about some sort of sponsor. <laughs> But I don't have a good like memory of any sponsor names to use for my jokes, so it wasn't going to work out. Right, I'm going to darken the lips. They have lipstick, very dark lipstick on them, so I'm going to just let them have their own shade and not bring in any highlight to them just yet. I'm going to fix that bloodshot eye. She does not have all of that crazy um, shading around the eyes that's just making her look like she's got bloodshot or sick or something like that. I'm going to darken her pupils. If the pupils come dark, stop making them these anime uh, contact lenses. All right, Just go for the shape of the actual value of the pupil. 
Enough with the contact lenser, lenses, uh, irises, okay, and pupils. That's just it's too much. Looks very fake. Okay, and then she's got lots and lots of shadow. There's only so much I can do in this uh, short amount of time, but just to show you that this is really, and you over-exaggerated these wrinkles here, which made her again look old. You really don't need that. All we need is just some edge work here, which you have, and some edge work here, just like that. And this shadow of the cheekbone travels all the way from the halfway point of the cheekbone. Yours goes all the way out. So I'm just going to make that edge. And this is what your painting should have looked like early on. Before you brought in any major black, so I'm going to just radially shrink my brush. <clears throat> and um, just make some edge work around the lips. So lips with uh, lipstick on them are allowed to be all edged out. You are allowed to make them a little bit more edgy. The cast shadow of the nose is very soft, but you gave this, this really strong cast shadow in the nose. So why were you using this reference if it wasn't looking anything like the reference? I mean, why use it? Oh, because I wanted to study a face and do my own thing. You're not, it's not your business right now to do your own thing. This is a study. You're teaching your brain instances of the real world. You're not, are you like a, an index of all the real instances of light on form? No, so you have no business being creative if you're trying to memorize and get better at shading so that one day it will be your business to be creative. And you'll have a backdrop of real believable light situations. So right now it's not your business to bring in your own thing. You don't have your own thing. That's why you're doing a study. Okay? When you get good, then you can bring in your own thing. And by get good, I don't mean like seven years from now. It could be next month. Just do enough of them. Just do enough so that you can have a real backbone when you're working with your with your with your you know characters. Or else they'll always have these issues with them. You'll never really block in you'll only block in somewhat. You'll never really give your edges a chance. And how where else where else are you supposed to learn believable instances of edge work if not the real world? So you chose a reference, stick to it and follow it. Make sure it looks just like it. And it can it can be messy. It can you can have some of your own thing could be the messy brush strokes. Your own thing could be the color that you uh, chose or how dark you decided to go. If it's allotted, you know, if it's um, acceptable. But your own thing is not your business right now. Your business is the real world and the form that comes out of it. The beautiful. Um, just undeniable amount of form that you have in the real world that you can't yet see. So I'm just doing the shadows on the inside of the sockets here. And then when I'm done and I have an amazing plate, then I'll just kind of start sneaking in the eyebrows. The eyes are still a little bit off. And if all of this is too harsh for you, there are other YouTubers who pat you on the back daily. <clears throat> with like two minute videos or whatever. I'm not really sure who's out there teaching nowadays. No offense to them, but if you want to get better, and I'm not saying their videos don't make you get better, but if you want to get better in this respect, it's not just about style, but about actual form and sciences so you can actually paint for Wizards of the Coast one day. You know, the heavy duty stuff. Then please, please respect your reference. Use it properly. You chose it for a reason. You chose it because it inspired you. You chose it because you thought her face was it's captivating. Something about her face made you choose it. Honor that. Okay, so now I'm just starting to block in details, some edges here and there. I'm keeping all of my edges. And you see how I'm respecting the plate of values I made over here. Okay. Exactly. Eyebrows grow sneakily. You don't just draw them in and they just leave them there. You have all these shadows to deal with around the brow bone. Brow bone comes before eyebrow. Write that back to me. Write that back to me like he never wrote anything back before. Like, write that back to me like he just, you just, you, you write that, <laughs> write that back to me and have a good smoke after. <laughs> is the swell of the right eye wrong? Shouldn't it be where the pupil is? Um, no. What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? The right, our right or her right? Okay. 
Write that back to me, my children. Okay, so there's no detailing around the pupils right now. There's no detailing around the lash line. Um, everything is pretty safe, and that's good because you want to stay safe with your blacks. said that and um, you want to be very very careful <laughs> oh, man, I was gonna make some dumb jokes with bringing in black too soon okay uh, brow bones come before the eyebrows all right um, I'm just following what I see here this is too extended so this is a little bit the orbit of the eyeball is way out of place but whoever painted this, I want this to be a day you remember. I'm going to show the before and after. It's going to be quite a substantial change. But I really want this to punch you in the gut. Because punches in the gut are moments when we just stop and say, what the fuck am I doing? Am I, am I doing enough? Like, how, how badly do I want to improve? Like, is this just a hobby for me? And even if it is just a hobby, why don't I deserve to be a great artist, even if it's just a hobby? Don't I deserve the best? So ask yourself, do you deserve the best? So you see I'm not using any blacks yet except around the dark spots. No whites either. But now I'm going to bring in the white and I'm going to bring them in wherever I etched them out earlier with red. And this is what's going to make them just pop. All right, we got brush stroke number one. I'm blocking. I can repeat the brush stroke as long as it helps me. Look at that forehead. Mm, bam. Now, what's the difference? You captured all the light source. Yours looks a little bit different. It looks a little bit more cheeky, more pinup. And this is pretty pinup. Is this when Monica was dressed up as the restaurant person in Friends? I don't know where this is from. Is that who she was supposed to be? I'm not sure. So now I'm blending away. <laughs> Yes, um, she's probably wearing a wig, yeah. All right, so you see how the shadow of the forehead slightly drops between the glabella, between the eyebrows, and then back towards the nose. Look, you can leave some of these nice and left over. So this is where I would do my own thing. I'm not sure if you guys have seen me on uh, after hours, but I, I sometimes leave a brush stroke nice and raw like that. I don't want to blend too much of it away. But all these neighborhoods are still dark. The lower half of the face is still darker than the upper half. I'm blending away a lot of this madness here that you had before. You were like paint by numbers and you chose the wrong value that they told you to use. So e even when you were doing paint by numbers, you were using the wrong color. So please walk to the front of the class, uh, bend over. Yep. And uh, Tommy, give me the ruler. <laughs> Oh, no, that's too bent over. Oh, you didn't have to take off your pants. No, 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 please put your pants back on. No, 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 no. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to just, I wish I'm just going to leave her eyes nice and sharp. So obvious because the part of the hairline didn't make, didn't meme sense. <clears throat> All right, she also has a bit of a dark circle. You see that? So if she had no eye bags, her eyes would have ended right there. But she does have eye bags, so that's what I'm going to use over here. <laughs> I love how delayed it is. <laughs> yeah, your actions are so delayed because of the lag. And now I'm just going <laughs> to... Tell me no! <laughs> Tell me don't help her! Tommy's a very proud executioner. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of the lashes. The lashes kind of get in the way, but I hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to use a little bit of extra edge work here and here. This is my own thing. Just a little bit on this one. Actually, this is the bright one. What am I saying? This would be the not bright one. So you still have dark lips to add in. Okay, you still have dark eyebrows to draw in. And we're just darkening eyebrows to the hairiest point. The hairiest point of the eyebrow 
is at the start of the eyebrow, just there. So soften it up, ease it back, you know, take it easy, block in first. You get, you see all this detail and you just get overwhelmed, you're like, holy shit, what am I going to do? Here, let me just do everything at once, and then something will, will be okay, and then I'll just make it a fan art. <laughs> I'll make it some Overwatch fan art, I'll get some favorites in, and go to sleep comfortably. All right, no! No, I will haunt you in your dreams if you if you pass all these corrections up and go make it a fan art of Ursula or something and post it on DeviantArt. I will find you. You think I won't? I will. I'll know how to search this. <clears throat> so I'm just completing the eyebrows. We don't see them because of the hair. And we still got a flip of the canvas to deal with. But this is pretty good considering we haven't flipped the canvas at all yet. Now I'm just edging around the nose. There's a small little wrinkle around the nose just over here. There are more deep blacks on all the dark spots. What are the dark spots of the face? Can anyone answer? Okay, so actually she doesn't have that. I'm just taking too many creative liberties over here. And I'm going to throw in some really delicate, and whatever, just because we're seeing all this detail in the photograph does not mean you get to use the same amount of detail in your version. The reason being, you as a human are supposed to, you see things one thing at a time. You don't see all the pixels, you see one thing at a time. You look at the eyes, you're not looking at the mouth. So that means you paint like you're seeing with the naked eye, one focal point at a time. Usually when we're, meet, we're meeting someone, we're talking to them, we only look at the eyes when we're meeting someone. So we are meeting, the viewer, me, is meeting your painting by looking at the eyes. So make the eyes the focal point. Everything else is a step below. So even in your reference, if you see a lot of detail and wrinkling and shiny sparkles and a unicorn on the lips. You don't draw that stuff. You leave that alone. You forget about that. You just draw, you draw a general rendition or the illusion of the texture on the lips. Okay. So then we got that and then we've got the inside which has makeup on it just like this. And this. And here. All right, and we've got some lashes over here. So this is more of a rendition inspired and moved by the reference, whereas before you had a little bit too much of your own thing, and your own thing was just mistakes. The sooner you accept your current level, the sooner you leave it. Write that back to me. The sooner you accept your current level in art, the sooner you escape it. If you take a while to accept it and finally realize, hey, maybe I do, maybe I should just get my head out of my ass and go get a critique, the sooner your head will be out of your ass, the sooner you won't need that much critique anymore. All right. So a lot of the people that hate my channel, that hate what I do, are mostly teenagers, little kids, you know, trying to figure their life out. And I'm okay with that because I have a belief that a lot of the people who love my channel are mature. And their maturity is what lets them know that I'm not out here to hurt you. I'm out here to help you. I, sh I don't have to be here. This is all pro bono. So remember that, you know, a mature person would have made the connection. Hey, I'm not out here to bash your work and make my work look better. I'm not even sh showing my work on, on uh, except for the Patreon videos. And I released those just so you guys can have them. Instead of the two views they get on from my patrons. Because <laughs> my patrons just, just are patrons. They don't actually, like download the content I give them every month. <laughs> They're just there to support it, but God bless them. But but yeah, all right? So I like to think that those who are fighting back, who are kind of demonizing me, I don't take it personally. I just see it as you have a long way to go before you start accepting. But accept it as soon as possible, please, because as soon as possible means you get better as soon as possible. It doesn't have to be me critiquing you. I'm just the voice of critiquing for this channel, but you can, you can find another channel where people can critique you. Our community is wonderful for critiquing. Join it. It's available for you. That's where I choose stuff out to critique for, for, um, you know, for all these videos that I make. These videos wouldn't be here if there isn't people, if there weren't people 
submitting their work. So think about that for a moment. If you're a hater trying to find content of shit that I said, and I said a lot of shit in this video, think about it. Take a moment. Just shh, just relax, you know, just take it easy. Breathe in, breathe out a couple breaths, and then think about it. You improve when you're when something just just snatches you out of your tunnel vision and throws you back out into into this like wide wide perspective view you improve because you're like oh my god this whole time i've been doing this and i didn't even realize that moment for me was when i realized i was drawing long faces for a very long time long faces long necks long this long that and i just didn't know why and it was when i realized and i never looked back you gotta be zoomed out to be able to do all this and this that goes without saying everything that i made today all the changes i made here today were because i zoomed out so yeah the, the dark spots <laughs> I didn't read the answer for the dark spots, but it's the two irises um, and the pupils, the nostrils, and the lip corners. Those are the dark spots. Okie dokie, smoky. And then we've got a little bit of light on the lower lip because it looks up at the light. <clears throat> and then we've got light underneath right over here. And then some shadow just over there. So for those who haven't joined the community challenge for this month, which is basically a Halloween challenge, it's basically draw as crazy as you can. It's not about shadows. It's not about fundamentals. It's just about being stupid creative. Like you can just combine the weirdest thing with the weirdest thing as long as it's a sentient character. And my mods and I, Tom, Izem, if he's comfortable with it, Antares, um, we'll, we'll all gather on a voice chat. Um, I'll share my screen as I go. And uh, on a hangout, and they'll be able to see my screen as I critique, and I will be critiquing with them. So it's not just going to be my voice, because obviously I'm not an authority on creativity. Uh, creativity is, is best when it's like lots of brains combined together um, and kind of just like trying to experiment with different combinations of themes and, and, and props and all that. So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be really fun. Tuesday, the 31st of October at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. If you've got parties, ditch them. <laughs> and join us and I have a couple of other announcements today before I look at the questions so uh, your honest critique style is why I stay I will not hesitate to yell at you <laughs> um, yes I will not <laughs> um, uh, snowflakes don't love his device channel <laughs> I love you Tom I feel like that happened to me when even Isarak looked at my form and didn't know what the F was going on. I'm not sure what this is a reference to. I'm about as mature as them come as they come and I love Isarak. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys. I'm just gonna read a couple more just to boost my ego. <laughs> I've had a really tough week, okay? Don't judge me. Alright. If you if you Vil says Isarak's knowledge will be used to do a waifu material. Okay, that's not that's not, <laughs> that's not what I was looking for. The hairiest part of the eyebrow is the start of the edges in the middle. Uh, no, it's the start of the eyebrows right here. That's the hairiest part. And then it just thins out and tapers the outer, the outmost you go. But sometimes you get hairy eyebrows that are just hairy throughout. <clears throat> I feel like when I watch a live stream or a video from Mr. Brack, I learn something new. Thank you. Let's read a couple more, guys. <laughs> Uh, Isarak is our voice of wisdom. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, the title of Isarak's book will be The Day I Learned to Zoom Out. <laughs> Every time I make too many uh, lines, I can hear Isarak screaming in my head. Most of us here think of you as a teacher, not just some random YouTuber. I think that's why other people react negatively to your critiques. They aren't in the right mindset. I agree, too. I've said this many times that my channel is, is very different. It's not about me. It's not about my art. It's not a vlog. It's not a diary. It's not a, well, let's look through my studio. Let's look through my art gallery from when I was seven. Uh, I made one video like that, and that was just the My Journey video, and that was that. Um, but I, I don't really make it regular to be about me. It's about you guys. It's about the power of critiquing and how people can really improve that way. <clears throat> I'm going to do one thing now that I looked away at the comments that came back and saw. I, have, I am missing a an expression. So I'm going to lower one eyebrow. Take a look at this, guys. And I'm going to raise the other. Oh my god. That really looks like she's curious and looking and trying to balance the eyes out. There are still issues with the eyes. 
this eye isn't looking up quite as much as it should, but we've pretty much done what a study is supposed to do, which is help us explore in a safe environment. Look at that, neat, 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 neat. What we're supposed to be doing with the, with the form. I'm gonna leave it expressionless, actually, because yours was expressionless. I wanna make the critique about where yours was. Okay, you, you looked through all of this. You saw every last one of these. Every last correction I made. So this is, this is, I guess this is the farthest my history goes. Let's walk through it again. I know it's quite a big change and some of you don't believe that it happened. You can zoom past in the video, mute me, and then speed it up or we'll just go through it right now. Organizing dark spots. Making sure the eye is nice and dark. Controlling areas that are supposed to be dark. Smoothing out. Separating planes of the side of the cheek from the front of the cheek from the lower part of the lower eyelids. Darkening dark spots once again, clearing out any unnecessary shadows, giving contour shadows. All right, and then the eyebrows, sneaking those in sneakily. Edge work more around the eyes, fixing the eye symmetry, bringing in those beautiful blocked in highlights, which were the biggest difference, don't you see that? Before, after highlights. But you can't do successful highlight, and this is done, basically. But you can't do successful highlights until you have a nice plate of shadow. And then after we had a nice plate of, I mean, fuck. We can't do <laughs> good highlights until we have a good plate of grays. After that, we bring in the white. After that, we bring in the black. Or you can do one after the other. It really doesn't matter which one you bring in as long as you had a plate of grays, all right? Imagine a nice big dinner plate full of all kinds of gray scales. You got gray mush and gray stuff and gray salad and you got a gray, um, uh, you got meat, and then you've got some gray peas, all right? That's all you should care. That's the meat of your painting. That is that is where it all happens, from the highs to the lows, from the edges to the spheres, and that is where it all happens. Black is nothing. It does nothing for the form, and highlights do nothing until the very end. And these, these aren't even highlights, you guys. These aren't even specularities. There are still specularities. To look, at look, our lightest value is a gray. And it's behaving like a highlight. So when we bring in our light, lightest lights, which are pure white, which are only possible because the eyes are so wet, we bring them in only over here where they're needed because the eyes are so rotated. So it's really not the iris that gets the light. It's the, the eyeball. All right, so before I did everything under your supervision, all the changes I made, I did while you guys were watching, okay? So there are still areas here that could be shadowed just a little bit more. For instance, we've got edges of the face that could be, shit, that could be a little bit more. <sighs> Photoshop. Select inverse, hide. That could, that could recede into a little bit more shadow because they're tucked in with the hair. So the hair of the wig is actually casting a shadow. The hair of the wig is casting a shadow over here. You can do that Hollywood thing. That's really cool. I love that. Fuck. And then we've got... I'm sorry for swearing for those kids. I'm so sorry. I almost lost control there for a second. And then you just can add the hair as in a separate hair study. The lower part of the, chin, of the, of the jawline and the chin all recede into some shadow. So you tried to do too much at once, so you didn't separate regions and neighborhoods from each other. So you ended up getting a very different... Her face is not her face. That's not the point. It's not photorealism. The point is we captured the instance. All right. Please flip the canvas. There you go. <clears throat> not bad, but as I said, the eye eyeballs. I can't go into the eyeballs right now. Not the eyeballs. The pupil and the iris, they're a little bit off. Here they have the equal amount of distortion here. They're not so distorted. Maybe I can do it really quickly with liquify if I don't mess it up too much. Excuse me, that was a hiccup. Yeah, I think that's better. <laughs> Please don't quote me when I drop the F-bomb. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like Dolly. It might be Dolly. Uh, recommended to not use color pickle, but to develop the ability to select a value by eye. Mm -hmm, that's good. Uh, is a gray terrian. <laughs> Mute. Isarak, never. <laughs> oh, let's hide in. Um, plate of grays, then highlights, then, then blacks. Exactly. The brow dance, yeah. 
Uh, I think you didn't flip the canvas. Yeah, yeah, I did. <clears throat> oh my gosh, everyone's asking for a flip. <laughs> oh, Thongmaster's back. Oh, hello. Um, view deleted message. Isarak is immature. <laughs> Isarak, can you join the community and draw only traditional? Yes, you can, Joanna. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. They said I was queen, guys. Hey, YouTubers. Hey, haters. Kim Hernandez said I'm a queen. It's done. It's official. I'm, a, I'm the queen. I just don't know what of, but I'm the queen. Mr. Rack, most of us here think it is a teacher. I read that. Any questions at all? I don't think I have time for other pieces. I'm so sorry if I got your hopes up. I know that's not very, a very popular thing for me to do. Someone made a meme about it, actually. If you guys want to see it. You want to see my dank memes? All right. When you upload lots of art, but Isarak doesn't choose any of it for critique. <laughs> Look, it detected the face like a hundred times. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Whoever did this, whoever like rippled this is a fucking genius. Just a fucking genius. It's just a genius. The fact they use my painting as, as my face, that's not me, by the way. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. On the Discord, we have just like a whole channel just for memes, and our resident duck is making lots of memes daily. <clears throat> I will see you guys on challenges announced on the Google+. Plus. Oh, yes, yes. I will put it back up once the Porches Studio sale is down. I'll put the challenge back up. But, yeah. Thank you everyone for joining today. I will see you guys on Thursday. Bye.